What's it like being an apprentice in Australia? What's it really like? Let's have a chat. This time, midlife. G'day guys, Chris here, Midlife Carpentry. Um, uh, coming to you from our bathroom and it uh, needs a bit of a reno. <laughs> But uh, we're not going to go there today, of course. Uh, that's, that's later on down the track. We'll head down that road. But um, yeah, today's little instalment, I wanted to have a chat to you guys about uh, what it's like being an apprentice. Now, this, this is for me personally, as well as uh, other apprentices that I've spoken to, other guys that I've been dealing with, um, guys that have you know, chatted to me here and there as well. So it's sort of a generalized version of what it's like to be an apprentice in Australia, whether you're a plumber, whether you're a chippy, whether you're an electrician, or whether you, um, you know, whether you're straight out of school, whether you're mature age or, or an adult apprentice, though, which is what I am. So, yeah, yeah, guys. So I'll go through a few points. Obviously, it's it's all my opinions, that sort of thing, things that I've heard. So take it for a grain of salt. You get a bit of an idea. But I need to put some towel rails up, guys. And um, yeah. That can be fun, I think. Um, as an apprentice, though, you 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 kind of you you kind of on that on that lower end of the pecking order, for want of a word. Um, I know it's not a nice way to put it, but you are you are you are classed as the you know the the bottom end, and and even sometimes some labourers will most likely have more skills than you too. Sometimes, so just be mindful of that. Um, as an apprentice, like you're, you are there to learn. That's why you're an apprentice. You're there to learn. You're there to grow. You're there to develop. So don't be disheartened if you've, uh, yeah, if you're finding yourself, you know, not getting the hang of things and all that sort of stuff. So hang in there. There's, there's always going to be that period of probably one to two years, I reckon, as an apprentice, uh, where you will be doing the jobs that are, well, you could probably almost say is pretty average, I guess, but. The way you've got to think about it is that the tasks that you're doing relate in some way, some form to the eventual trade that you're going to have, if that kind of makes sense. So it doesn't matter how small or minute the job. So for example, something behind me like hanging hooks, you wouldn't think a carpenter would do that. But the skills, skills to do that are handy for a carpenter to have, are something that a carpenter does have. So all these little things that you might be doing in jobs that you think, hang on, I'm not fucking doing plumbing. I'm not doing electrical work. Why am I not doing this? Why am I just drilling holes? Why am I sweeping floors? Why am I cleaning up? Why am I doing this? It's all a part of the bigger picture, okay? So as frustrating as it might be to be doing the jobs that you personally, you don't see as relating to your apprenticeship, um, there are aspects of the tasks and stuff that you're doing can relate to them. And look, at the end of the day, if, if you're in a company and they do framing, they might just do framing flat out. That's all they do. Wall framing, uh, that's it. You know, you, you rock up to a job site where your frames are on the ground and you mount them up and, and sort them all out and fix them off and everything like that. Uh, then you get your roof trusses on and maybe another team might come in and do that. But if you are stuck with those sort of jobs where, you, where you, that is all you're doing, you know, some guys think that that's carpentry. That's what a carpenter does is just just that, that timber work and stuff, but it's so broad. Um, and it's the same with plumbing and electrical too. It's the same deal. Like there's, there's a lot more to those jobs, a lot more to those trades and fitting PowerPoints and putting sinks and tap, taps on sinks and stuff. So yeah, anyway, that's just my, my little opinion. I'm going to put some hooks on the wall and have a bit more of a chat on the other side of this, hey? All right, guys, I'll leave you to it.
that should work all right, I reckon. Why did I put them so low? I bet you that's what a lot of you are asking. Why are they so low? Why are they up high? The reason why is because that our six-year-old, I'm sorry, five-year-old, can get access to them. I think that's important. He can get his own bag. He can get his brother's bag. He can help us out a bit. I think it needs to happen every now and then, I think. But otherwise, yeah, I should do the job. Next ones. Uh, got a few aircon remotes and stuff to do. You don't need to worry about that. I'll try and do those. It's suspicious to put up and stuff too. But uh, yeah, I'll talk to you on the other side when I'm doing that. I've got to do a doorknob. So I'll see if I can get you involved in that one. Okay. Hey guys. Right oh, So uh, just a quick heads up. This is the next day. This isn't Sunday. So um, I was planning to do a doorknob, hang that up, give you guys the footage as well, get you involved in it. Um, but unfortunately, as, as I'm sure some of you are aware, when you have family, things take priority and uh, that they did yesterday. So yeah, we did a little bit of gardening and stuff and just, just a little bit of family time, run the mark and, and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, the boys were a bit of a handful yesterday, so we just had to do what we could. Um, look, let, let's go back to, to what we're talking about, about apprentices and, and being an apprentice in Australia. And like I said, you are you are the bottom of the, the run, you are the, the bottom of the ladder. Uh, so you've, you've got to get used to basically dealing with things and, and things getting thrown at you and stuff. So um, as an apprentice, like if you want to grow and develop, I think it's important that you show, I know a lot of guys are probably going to hate me saying this, but you need to show that bit of initiative, you need to show that little bit of passion, that desire to learn and that drive as well. And that, that will feed your career, that will feed your lessons, that will feed... Um, the people around you and supply them the energy to go, hey, here, I'll show you something, you know, that sort of stuff. Or even just in conversations, like, oh, did you know this and this? You know, that, it's, it's those sort of things that help you to learn, okay? And that helps you to develop as an apprentice. So, you know, things like, you know, showing your initiative by, by rocking up on time, like, you know, rocking up five minutes early to a job and being, being prepared to get stuck in and, and, and get the jobs done that need to happen, all right? Be there, be organized, be ready to go. You know, if you've got battery tools, make sure the ch batteries are charged and, you know, you're, you're not sort of fumbling around to start the day. Like, you, you're there keen, ready to crack on, you know. It's better for them to be waiting on, better for you to be waiting on them as opposed to, you know, your tradesmen waiting on you because they just won't. It just won't happen. So, <laughs> they got stuff to do. Uh, I said, uh, tools are another big one too, I think is important. If you take the time to purchase some decent tools, get your tool repertoire up, um, get your collection going, get things happening for yourself, regardless of what trade you're in, doesn't matter what you do, uh, you can be a hairdresser or, or a chef or whatever, build up your tools, make sure you've got yourself, you know, uh, good quality tools that are gonna help you through your trade. At the end of the day, that's, that's what makes or breaks you, I reckon. Like if, if you haven't got the right equipment to do the jobs that you're doing, or you, it, it, it makes it a lot harder, it makes it a damn sight a lot harder. Build up your knowledge, so your knowledge base. You know, build up your knowledge from the people around you. Open up the peripheral region. I've spoken about that before in some of my videos. It's important to look around, keep track of what everyone's doing, um, and you learn things. You will, you will pick up things like going, oh, yeah, that's how they did that. So while you're sweeping the floor, you know, cleaning up, you know, or painting or whatever you've got to do around the other trades. Have a look around and just see what they're doing. You know, whether you're chopping onions at the bench, you've got another 200 to cut or whatever. Like, have a look around and see what the qualified people are doing around you and you never know what you could pick up and learn. And if you see it in your own time, practice. You know, you have a go at it. See if you can do it. So that that knowledge, you know, you don't expect to be spoon-fed. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. If you're lucky and you've got good, and you've got particular trades, people are happy to do that, then great, awesome. But nine times out of 10, you kind of need to chase a bit of information yourself and a bit of knowledge yourself. A lot of it's surrounding environment, like the people that you're around you and stuff. It's attitude as well. So like I mentioned before, using initiative, getting up, getting in a bit earlier, get things organized and stuff, attitude and um, motivation as well. So being passionate about your job, being motivated, get stuck in. If you lose all passion and you definitely don't have it and you're not interested at all, get out. It's simple, like you, there's no point in you grinding through day in, day out, all right? You normally know within the first few months whether this is what you wanna do, all right, realistically. So 
save yourself some trouble, save your employees some trouble, work it out, make a decision, yes, I want to do this, I'm going to have a crack at this, I'm going to give it a go. But in saying that too, give it a chance. Give it a go. Don't be afraid to, you know, stick it out and, and, and see what happens too. So it's a fine line, guys. Fine line. Sometimes you'll find yourself in a situation where you're doing the same thing day in, day out. So you're, uh, say for example, you might just be sweeping floors and cleaning up and that's all you're doing. You haven't touched a tool in weeks. You need to ask the question, why? I think that's important. Now, whether you ask your boss directly, whether you ask the other trades directly, it's entirely up to you and how comfortable you feel. If you're uncomfortable and unsure, talk to your training organizations. That's what they're there for. They're there to support you and help you out. So talk to the people that are running your apprenticeship. Get in touch with them. There's, there's multiple guys that you can talk to there. So don't be afraid to you know, ask the questions that, oh, look, you know, over the past three months, all I've really been doing is, is cutting nogs and that's it. I haven't even cut studs, I've just cut nogs and that's, that's all I've been doing. And I'd like to do something else. I'd like to develop my knowledge a bit more, okay? Mistakes will be made, guys. So that is another good point. Need to understand that you, you are learning, you are growing, you are developing, and you will make mistakes, okay? So take that, don't take things to heart. You will cop a bit of flack from it. No doubt you will cop some flack from making a mistake. You'll, you'll have guys stir you up and all that sort of stuff. Take that for a grain of salt. Don't take it to heart. If it obviously genuinely offends you and you don't feel comfortable with receiving that sort of um, haggling or whatever you want to call it, then, then yeah, talk to your boss, talk to your, talk to your employment agency, talk to your, sorry, your apprenticeship organization and stuff. They can help you out. But there is a very, very fine line, guys, and I understand this between bullying and just general sort of banter and stuff like that. So there's two, there's sort of two avenues you can go. There's a bullying avenue and then there's a banter avenue. So banter should be at least a two way street. Should better have a little bit of fun with it. Not too much, remember you, you are still an apprentice and these guys are your senior, okay? I, I don't care how old are you, I don't care what the age difference is, all right? If you're 50 and you're, you're an apprentice, then your tradesman is above you, whether he's 25 or whether he's 30, it doesn't matter, or 60, it doesn't matter. He is always going to be your senior, and that's something important you need to respect, I think. I think that's an important thing, an important part of being an apprentice, is to respect your tradesmen. I think that's just about covered everything. I might have a few other points and stuff to bring up, but the tool shout out this week. Now, this is a particular tool that I have um, wanted to shout out for a while, actually. So this is this is this tool is is a little bit of a handy one. Uh, I've got a few multiple uses and stuff too, and I'll, I'll throw some footage up and stuff of how I've used it in the past. But look, a lot of people might recognise this end of it. So I guess you can call it your cat's paw or something. Um, but yeah, so it's basically a pry bar. But the difference with this one is you've got a wider end at the top. So this is a heart, H A R T. So a heart, and then they've got something user and bystander or something. I don't know what the what that reference is, but yeah, um, great little tool, great little pry bar, very handy. I'm finding myself not using my flogging chisel as much now, so I've got an old Stanley chisel I normally keep in my belt uh, for for that reason. But that's what this is for now. I use this; it's like a little bevel and stuff on it, so it's actually quite quite sharp and it's fairly sturdy as well, and uh, great for you know, those times where you need to pry or lift things and stuff like that, lift doors up that little bit and, and stuff like that. So, um, then obviously you've got the cat's paw at the other end as well. So when you're trying to get into wall cladding with little little grooves and stuff in it, you can actually hit that down and pop out nails and stuff on them too. So yeah, handy little tool guys. I definitely, uh, um, it's a bit harder to store in your tool belt than the standard cat's paws. Normally they have a narrow bottom, you see those around. Um, so look very similar to this, but at the base, it's uh, basically identical to that at the base. But um, I certainly prefer this setup. I, I do enjoy, um, I do find that I use this a fair bit. So I'm sort of stepping away from having my chisel on my belt and I'm using this for that purpose as well. So the heart pry bar or crowbar or whatever you want to call it, a eh? Jimmy bar, lots of little terminologies and stuff for it. Certainly something worth having in your kit. For the delay in getting the old video out, I tried to do some more footage and stuff like that uh, on, on Sunday and that with, uh, with this little GoPro. Now, 
I had a gamble, I just tried to see how the audio would go just directly with this, and unfortunately it's a bit rubbish, which I kind of had a hunch about, but I didn't think it'd be as bad as it was, especially when it was raining and uh, picked up the background noise, and yeah. So I've had to redo everything, which is what I'm here today to talk to you guys about, so that's all done. And um, yeah, hopefully get this edited and out to you tonight. And uh, yeah, you can have your little installment and stuff for the week. So apologies again for the delay in the installment. But as you can understand, family comes into play and you know, we're, we're all about, uh, you know, the families and doing the right thing. So righto guys, thank you very much again for watching. Build on legends, get stuck in, have a great week. And if you like, uh, hit a like here to subscribe. Jump on Instagram if you want. Follow me on there as well. I got a few little snippets and stuff there. I haven't bowled you over with footage and stuff there because my YouTube channel is the main thing. But uh, yeah, it's a good way if you want to shoot me a message or something for whatever reason. You know, feel free to get to do so. So yeah. Otherwise, uh, yeah, being an apprentice in in Australia it can it can be rough and tough, and wages can be crap and. Yeah, it can be some hard times. It can be painting for weeks on end or, or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's all about getting the trade, guys. It's all about getting through those few years that to get your qualifications on the side and being the best you can be at the particular avenue or direction you want to head. All right? Keep striving, keep pushing forward and getting it done, guys. All right. We'll see you later, eh? All the best.